Hi, this is Professor Cummings. I have a presentation today where I wanted to talk to you about something called impulse and momentum. This is another one of those uh, concepts, or two concepts actually, that take place in kinematics and dynamics. It seems to be a little, you know, challenge to understand them, and I want to try and make this video to kind of give them some explanation. So we'll start off with uh, momentum. So what exactly is momentum? So we, we can look up a, a definition of it. So momentum refers to the quantity of motion that an object has. If an object is in motion, in other words, it's on the move, then it has momentum. So you can think of momentum as mass in motion. Now over on the left of your screen here, let's say we have a, a big snowball on top of a hill. And that snowball is going to roll down. You know, so it travels down the hill. And as it gets down to the or as it goes through that entire motion, you know, you have a mass, however big that snowball is, going at a certain velocity, you know, however fast it's traveling down that hill. Now, depending on how big it is or how much mass it has, it can actually be pretty difficult for you to stop that, that snowball. On the other hand, if it's going fairly slow or if it's fairly small, then you could stop it, you know, pretty easily. You know, that's the difference between uh, stopping a, a ball rolling down the hill or ending up in an avalanche. So mass and velocity are a really big deal. You know, it's a really big deal as to what momentum actually is. So it's that mass, the amount of mass in motion. It's the, you know, again, the difference between an avalanche and just being hit with a snowball. So it really comes down to how much stuff you have, in other words, how much mass there is, as well as how fast this stuff is going. So if we had to put this mathematically, we could say momentum is mass times the velocity. You know, so the bigger the mass, or the bigger the velocity, the bigger the momentum. And that can be represented with a formula. You know, we represent momentum with lowercase p is equal to m times v. And the units on momentum is just as this. So it's mass times velocity, and in the metric system that's kilograms per meters per second, or kilograms times meters per second. Now, I was talking about, you know, an avalanche versus a snowball. And we were looking at this momentum can be defined as mass in motion, and we've got this equation that we look at. You can also think of momentum as how much it takes to resist this thing from moving. So an object that doesn't move at all has zero momentum. Okay, so you know, so if it doesn't move at all, it has zero momentum. If it moves really fast, you know, the momentum goes up. So you can see the momentum is proportional to to the velocity, but it's also proportional to the mass. And this is where I say it's, it's the resistance to actually being stopped. It's the resistance to you actually being able to stop that motion. You know, again, that's the difference between being, you know, I think of it in sports terms, you know, being hit by a, a bigger football player versus a, a really small football player, both of them traveling at the same speed. So let's imagine this kind of an example. So we've got two different masses, two different big spheres. One is 100 kilograms and the other one is 50 kilograms. So let's say that they're both moving at uh, 10 meters per second. So they're both going at 10 meters per second, uh, but one is twice as massive as the other. So if you had to resist that, what would it take for you to resist it? How much momentum did both of those spheres have? Well, if we look at the first sphere, we can calculate its momentum. Mass times velocity is just going to equal 100 kilograms times 10 meters per second, so 1,000 kilograms per second. The other one, going at the exact same speed at half of its velocity, or it's half of its mass, is 500 kilometers per second. Kilo, yeah, kilometers per, uh, kilograms meters per second, my mistake. So you can see the momentum is proportional to its mass. Now that leads us to the next question. So what is impulse exactly? So impulse can be defined as uh, caused by the force during a specific interval of time. It's equal to the body's change in momentum during that time interval. So it's a way to measure a change in momentum. So you can see it highlighted in red, the change in momentum during a time interval. So the unit of impulse is the same as the unit of, Im of momentum. So kilograms times meters per second. So 
we look at these two, or look at that definition, let's break it down into something a little more simple. So impulse, so it's the force during a specific time interval. Now this is important because it's a concept that has been used in engineering uh, you know, for years. You, it's been the, it's the whole idea behind why crumpled zones in your car keep you safe. It's the whole idea of why it is that your, your airbags can keep you safe. You know, amongst other things, what they do is they actually slow down the amount of time that it takes to apply that force. Now, they only slow them down by a little bit. You know, the crumple zones in your car, you know, they may only slow them down by fractions of a second. But those fractions of a second are enough to keep you actually a lot safer than, say, cars during the 70s. Now, to understand momentum a little bit more, or impulse a little bit more, we have to go back to Newton's law. This is Newton's second law, force is equal to mass times acceleration. So, again, keeping this in mind, force during a specific interval of time. So how can we get this Newton's law in terms of time? Well, we have one rule we already know about acceleration. Acceleration is just the change in velocity over the change in time. So we can rewrite this formula still holding true to its value, that force is equal to mass times the change in velocity over that change in time. Now if we can make it a little, or a little rearrangement, multiplying both sides by the change in time, what we end up with is force times the change in time, you know, force during a specific interval of time, is equal to mass times the change in velocity. Now look at that equation. Now what do you have here? You've got momentum, which is mass times velocity, is equal to the impulse, force times the time. So impulse and momentum go hand in hand together. So you, the amount of time you have for impulse, or how much you have of your change in your momentum, is equal to what you have in your impulse. So what this equation, as it's written right here, is it's assuming that your entire momentum is being stopped your entire momentum is being taken into account or being stopped during that in, during some sort of movement. And this would be the equation of say if you had to design or calculate impact on a of an airbag. So you're expecting the momentum to actually everything to come to a stop and the momentum to actually equal out to the impulse that you had. Now a measure, you know, the the impulse is a measure in the change of momentum and that unit of, of impulse is the same as as a unit of the momentum, so kilograms times meters per second. And we end up with this formula. So again, that is assuming that everything is coming to a stop. So you've got a, an object that's moving at a certain momentum, and if when it comes to a complete stop or if it impacts something, this is the impulse that you'll have. And that brings us to something else. The law of conservation of momentum. And what that states is that the momentum after an impact is equal to the momentum before that impact plus whatever your impulse was. You know, so that is saying that if something is moving with a certain momentum and it comes into contact with something, you know, something that's trying to resist its movement, that the change in whatever momentum it has, meaning that whether the mass changes or the change in the velocity of that object is equal to that original momentum plus whatever that impulse was. So what that we can write that equation as the momentum before impact plus your impulse is equal to the momentum after. I'll write it another way, the impulse before plus whatever it is in your you know the sum of your impulses is equal to the momentum after. And that is the law of conservation of momentum. You know, and that's also a brief explanation of impulse and momentum. So momentum is just your mass times your velocity, and impulse is the force over a, a change in time. And this is Professor Cummings. Hope this uh, video was helpful. If it was, go ahead and uh, like or comment and subscribe. Uh, if you want to see more of my videos or want to see more updates, I do these you know, multiple times a day on Google+. Plus. You can go to, to my Google Plus page, which is also under Infinity Manufacturing, and also on my Facebook page, Infinity Manufacturing. Thanks a lot.